I'm Anna Gret and I'm the founder and designer of Tulips. Um, Tulips revamps ancient textile traditions. Now that's a big statement to make, but um, basically we work with um, ancient traditions in different places in the world that are a little bit off the radar in terms of economic growth um, and create beautiful textiles um, using textile traditions from Ghana, um, Kenya and India at the moment. And we make beautiful women wear out of it. So dresses, but also some accessories. I mustn't forget there are scarves and bags to be had too. Um, and the idea behind it really is to create a new heritage for fashion, something that is mindful and sustainable and transparent. So I guess as a designer and as a person, I had a very big dream and I can't actually believe that the dream has moved on so fast since I had my dream that I'm really living inside it now. So for me, I used to sit around after I did my degree and um, really thought about what I could do with my talent, how I could use my talent to make a change in the world and really thinking about quite big, you know, a bit sort of the idea, wow, you know, I want to change the world. I'm not happy with the status quo, and I'm not happy with the status quo of fashion, my industry. So I did a lot of thinking, and really for a year and a half, I collected post-it notes, and I covered a very large space in my bedroom with my thoughts and my ideas and any kind of values that I thought would be useful and would come into play for actually my future. And I wasn't thinking about setting up a business. I was just simply thinking about what am I going to do with my talent? How do I want to live my future? And what story do I want to tell my grandchildren? So out of that whole process, a year and a half later, I was like, OK, well, actually, you know, there are quite some valuable points on all these post-it notes. And I pulled them all together. and. What came out of that was really that I wanted to build something that would socially make a difference, that would engage me with people, that would allow me to work with textile traditions from different places around the world in communities that are off the radar economically and help them grow, help them survive, help those traditions survive, but also bring inspiration to our parts of the world through those traditions and processes and build something that had sustainable backbone. Um, so that's how Tulips essentially came about. And my starting point really was like, just I just want to be excited. I want to travel the world, and I want to see places. And I want to integrate that into my business. Because if I'm going to run a business for the rest of my life, it's got to be fun, right? So really, it's got to do all the things for me as a person and my future family and whatever um, that inspire me as a designer, but also as an individual in my everyday life. So I looked at West Africa, first of all, simply because it has lots of beautiful traditions. And it's got a way of life that I was interested in. So I went to the Gambia, and I did my market research there, working with some artisans on batik, and really listened. So the priority for me was to just go and gather thoughts um, on how people were living, how people wanted to live their lives, how they envisaged their futures, now that I knew where I wanted to go. It was also important to find people who knew where they wanted to go, that I could collaborate with. And so really for the next year or so, and I'm, we're, we're talking like 2005, 2006, I listened. I traveled and I listened and I then decided, well, actually, one of the most important things would be that I should design a collection that's going to be really commercial, something that's going to integrate and really tap into the mainstream and get as many people as possible thinking about sustainability um, without me creating fast fashion, but actually already looking at how our consumer system works and, you know, just integrating what I do into it without selling out on, on, on the side of um, the artisans and without diluting the traditions, actually creating something that would work on all sides and across all my whole supply chain 
and create a harmony. So create a mindful product that would be harmonious to the people producing it and to the people that would be consuming it or buying it and enjoying it on the other side. So really, the main aspects in it were to look at it had to be economically and ecologically and socially sustainably fair. And so I designed a very, very small collection, which I wanted to test out in Ghana. And it was three dresses and two prints in two different colorways, very, very simple. I just looked at the economy that I had available and really just looked at, well, let's test this. It was brand new. I didn't know if it was going to work. And so initially, it was meant to be another research trip to Ghana, but um, I got very lucky. And the Ethical Fashion Forum had set up at the time, and they were sort of dabbling in different um, areas in the world, trying to promote different co-ops and trying to get people thinking sustainably. So they ran a competition called Design for Life Ghana. And I just couldn't believe my luck, because it was literally, it, it was one of those moments where you go, OK, something is happening in the world. People are starting to think about things. It wasn't just me in my studio coming up with ideas. So I entered my designs, and I won that competition. And on the back of that, top shops started to think about how they could integrate fair trade and sustainability into some of the products they were selling. And so they ended up being on that jury. Um, and actually, one of those juries was Melanie herself. And they bought that collection. So this button is very stiff. I got to basically test my product in my target market um, without me having you know, anticipated that that would happen. And it really sped up the process of my business. You know, it literally, it just threw me into it without me being prepared for it. So it, it, there was a lot of learning that happened on the go. And I'm actually really grateful for that because the spontaneity of those moments actually has helped up um, bring some innovation into my business. Because it had, you know, we all had to think on our feet. We had to make the product fresh. We had to keep our processes fresh. And, and within that process, you know, we built a lot of collaboration. So the way that Tulips works now is that every person engaging with us in our supply chain, they're all entrepreneurs in their own right. So the idea really was to build collaboration with businesses rather than me saying, oh, OK, well, you're now a Tulip supplier. You now you know, have to work by my ideals, and you have to do as you know, I say. It was a lot of learning on both sides of learning how people wanted to live in certain places around the world, so particularly Ghana and Kenya and India, where I work. And so all, all together now, oh, Tulips works with um, two businesses in Ghana where we print textiles and make some of our products. We work with Soko, which is a fantastic initiative in Kenya. Um, and we work with a company called Rajka in India. And all of those companies have the same ideals in terms of sustainability, which are really transparency, fairly traded principles. And I say fairly traded because it's not fair trade. It's actually a lot more than that. Um, and innovation. So really, innovation in the sense of the business model that we've got, but also innovation in terms of the products that we create because we got to keep them fresh. We've got to keep them interested. And really sort of challenge the status quo on many levels in fashion, not just in terms of our supply chain, but also in terms of fairly traded product and the stigma that's attached to it on the consumption side of it. You know, We want to bring product out that actually just looks cool. And then people can discover that it has a really strong, sustainable backbone to it. So there are two lines that Tulips produces now, and one is the Golden Coast collection. So a lot of that production happens in Ghana and with local batikas and local seamstresses really boosting female entrepreneurs' businesses. Um, these ladies, they went from being very, very small local producers 
to being international exporters now, and not just exporters for us, but in their own right, um, working with other people around the world. These are just some of the designs um, that Tulips creates. Now, obviously, when I talk about sustainability, I think about economy, because essentially money has to make sense within every business. So uh, it, traditionally, people talk about the triple bottom line within businesses. Now, I always think, well, you know, the bottom line to business, for me, first of all, is love. And it sounds maybe a bit cheesy, but at the end of the day, when you really trim down whatever process you've got in life, it comes back to love in some way. Um, love of your nearest and dearest, love of your neighbor, the people that you work with. And so it transforms into kindness and mindfulness. And that filters into every process. You know, that can filter into to the systems of, of payment that are set up. So for instance, I was talking earlier with Stephanie, um, just taking into consideration, you know, when when the school term in India starts in the area where our producers work, or when does the school term start in, in Ghana where our producers work, you know, can we ensure that invoices are paid before a certain date so that school fees can be paid in time? I mean, this is just a very simple example, but these are one of the, some of the things we take into consideration. So what that means so you have to really know the businesses that you're working with and the individuals in those businesses and what makes their lives go around locally. Now, oh, I want to go back to um, Ghana. How much time have I got? Two minutes. Two minutes. OK. So um, part of the business model in Ghana um, is ecologically sustainable simply because of the way the processes work. So um, it's... Even though we're creating innovative and contemporary product, we don't dilute the processes that we work with. So we're adding to it where we can without actually making major changes, but really actually looking at design stages, looking at you know, what kind of product do we need to produce in terms of its aesthetic um, so that it will sell, so that it will make money all the way through. But then really keeping true to traditional printing processes in Ghana Batik and utilizing the characteristics of those processes, i.e., you know, small amount of water is used. We source everything locally. So ideally, we'd love to have organic cotton in Ghana for the products, but the organic cotton that's grown in Mali, we can't get into Ghana. It's shipped over to India. So do we then make that decision to ship it back into West Africa and really increase our carbon footprint? Or do we say, actually, we keep it as a local business model and we buy what we've already got available? And maybe in the future, when organic cotton is available locally, we then tap into that. So it's also looking at what, what have you got available and what's possible within the places that you're working with. Because running a business is challenging enough and you don't need to reinvent the wheel but really utilizing businesses that are already operating on the ground for your whole supply chain is very important, no matter where it is. And obviously what's important for our end is to really know the people that we work with. So again, it's like sourcing from faraway places where you've never met anybody. Seems like quite a utopic idea to me personally. I, d you know, I want that face-to-face -face contact. I want to have seen the person that I'm buying stuff from. I just think that's important. Anyway, it's important to me and the people that work with us. Um, the second collection that we produce now is Planet India, and that's working with applique and cutout techniques in Gujarat. And we've partnered with a company called Rajka out there who've got 25 years' experience working with 600 artisans on the ground um, who produce just the most magnificent handcrafted products. Now, the other thing was to look at our water footprint and how to improve that. And in India, we've got wonderful fabrics available. So one way of doing it was to integrate Cardi. That's just got huge sustainable credentials. Um, I can't go into all the details, but you can go on the website 
and read about it. Um, and that slide was a nice coincidence when we shot the last lookbook. It just happened. We only discovered it in, in all the photos um, after the shoot. And I think it's really appropriate. I think that actually it doesn't matter what kind of business you run. It doesn't matter if it's sustainable or whatever you're doing. You know, if you have a dream and you have a passion, the most important thing is to keep going and to never, never give up. But to keep an open mind and to learn. Um, yeah, that's me done. Um, if you guys want to connect and come and talk after or um, connect on Twitter and follow the story. That would be great. Thank you.